some group and ask Elder to open up in a prayer. Then I'm going to read the scripture. I read the scripture, then you open up in a prayer. Okay. Down at the road where my Savior died. Down where from cleanse and from sin I cry. There to my heart was the blood it flies. I'm singing, Lord, to his name. Lord, to his name. Precious name. I'm singing, Lord, to his name. Precious name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood of his life, singing, Lord, to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus, so sweet as a within. There at the cross where he took me in. I'm singing, Lord, read to his name. Singing, Lord, read to his name. Precious
For as the body is one that has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. I'm going to ask for a prayer about it. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, that we come before you, just as humble as we know how, Father, the hour has come, that we should be sealed with the word of God in our minds, O Heavenly Father, and in our hearts, O Heavenly Father, help us to have an open, open mind unto your spirit, knowing that where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are, one in the midst. Father, help us to continue to stir up the gift that is within us, O Heavenly Father, help us to receive your word, O Father God. We bind up every unclean spirit that is not like your spirit, Father. Send your Holy Spirit to make preaching easy, O Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you open up the ears of your ears. For this is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. 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 Moving right along, I'm going to ask the, 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 the um, officers to come and take up the tithe and offer. Because I want to get this teaching out so you can see what it is that the church actually looks like when it's operating in the right realm of under the right capacity. Uh, I want you to get an understanding in your mind, draw a picture in your mind what the church is supposed to be doing and how it operates. Number one is, what is it really to, to, to take up the time and I'm going to tell you this. This is just the training ground. This is just the classroom. Once you say yes, Lord, you just come here to train the brain people here to train them how to set the light on the E. See, because the light ain't supposed to be on one of the back. It's supposed to be on the E. So men can see it. It ain't supposed to be from this house to your house, from your house to this house, from your house, this house to your house. It ain't supposed to be that way. I'm turning it over to y'all. There's no one else. Light here. Praising you, for God, and ask you to bless those people that gave and those that have not. Father, we thank you for this day, Father. Father, help us to have open ears and hearts, open hearts, Father, to receive your word, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I want y'all to. We thank you for your liberal giving, and I want y'all to go with me somewhere. I want y'all to go with me to Ephesians 4.11. I want to show y'all something in Ephesians 4.11. And I want you to understand something about Ephesians 4.11. And Ephesians 4.11, Paul is the author of Ephesians 4.11. And so therefore I want you to understand that Ephesians 4.11 is dealing with the church. The Ephesians 4.11, he says, and he talks about the fivefold ministry, he says, I give you the apostles. He said, I give you the prophet. He said, I give you the evangelist. He said, I give you the pastor teaching. He said, now I give you this fivefold ministry, and then he's going to go on to tell you, this is why I'm giving you this fivefold ministry. Now, there's, there's an apostle that God gave the message that I'm bringing this information from. So his name is Apostle Paul, and God, we know that God elected him. But he was sold with a letter in his hand, going down the road to Damascus to want to drive some Christians out and beat them. God put another letter in him, changed his name from Saul to Paul, and, and, and gave him two thirds of the New Testament. Now God took him from being wretched with a letter to persecute Christians to a letter to build Christians. Took him from being sold with a letter to hurt Christians. To be empowered with a letter to restore Christians. That's important. So now when we get there, we get on down there and it tells you why he gave you the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. So the evangelist and the pastor teacher does this. They stand in the church. And that pastor teacher stands in the church. Now, if you will read down there, it says now, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher is to bring the church to the unity of the faith so there'll be no more children tossed to and fro. Why is that important? Because each of you, we get ready to go to 
1 Corinthians 12, each of you has a spiritual gift given by God. So this church teaches you how to identify your gift by instructing you, by watering you, by fertilizing you, by giving you the word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God makes room for your gift, but he does not let you use your gift carnal-minded and every time something happens, you waving in the wind. He waits for you to become mature. So what is robbing the body of Christ is nobody got time for God. So that one thing that you can't give up called time to open your Bible up and learn of the God that has put this gift in you so you can operate in that gift, you ain't got time to mature. So you ain't watering yourself enough. You ain't fertilizing yourself enough. So you stay a baby. So your gift never show up. So God never got to make room for your gift because you don't know what it is. You want me to go ahead? You want me to go ahead? You're going to get a little sticky. You're going to get a little sticky now. You see, because here's the deal. We put God down because we need more money. We pick it back up on Sunday. We put God down because we got to try our tribulation and we pick it back up when we have it. We put God down for everything that comes along, and we know we ain't got what we need yet, but it's all right, because this is what I do. So now, I'm the pastor teacher. So now, actually, when you go to 1 Corinthians, the 12th verse, I don't want you to think I'm making nothing up. You see the church building around the one that has the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God's word, which we be. Which we be. First Corinthians, Corinthians 12, 7. Now, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, for it is given to the one the Spirit of word and wisdom and the Spirit. So I'm using, you know, I'm using the word and wisdom right now. So around me, I'm teaching the word of wisdom so that you can be watered, so that you can grow up. Yeah. So now, watch this. In order for the church to grow up, there's some other gifts there. It said, to one, faith. To one, healing. By the same spirit. So I need two people. I need two people to come sit right there. One is going to be faith, the other is going to be here. Sit right there, right there. I'm going to get you up in a minute. I'm going to get you up in a minute. So now, here's what happens. When they keep coming to the church, how can you hear except you have a pastor? I keep pouring into them, and their gift of faith and their gift of healing will show up because the first thing that starts happening is your anointing that healing won't be coming out through your mouth, your hands. Heat up every time you get in church. And your faith will be unshakable because the Holy Spirit gave it to you. You didn't get it. You're sick. But being that the pastor teacher is the one with wisdom so that you may heal, so that you may be watered, so that you may be fertilized, your gift will show up and then God will part the church to make room for your gift. Let me move on. Then it says, to another the work in a miracle. I need one more person. Matter of fact, young man, can I use you? Can you sit right there? That's four. I need, I need three more people. So what happens? 
Corinthians, when the pastor look out in the congregation and they warn sick, then he goes and get healed. Build, 
plan. Cast down. He said, I'm going to qualify you with my word. And so here's what he did. He qualified the elect according to Ephesians 1 3. He says, before the foundation of the world, I knew you. So now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That one that he knew before the foundation of the world is a masterpiece. Oh, y'all. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. You can open your Bible and go to Ephesians 2 10. I'm going to prove that one that he had that he rejected, that he chose to be separated before his mother ever knew what it was like to carry him in the womb. I'm going to prove to you that that one is a masterpiece belonging to God. What do you say? Ephesians 2 10 says. <laughs> what man, what did Jesus you say? You were recreated in the workmanship. Huh? You were recreated in the workmanship of who? Jesus Christ. Huh? He said he cre recreated you. Huh? Well, okay, if he recreated you, that means he resculpted you. And then not only did he resculpt you to be a masterpiece in the workmanship of Christ. But then he looked at you and tell you, I already got to work. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I already got to work. Mm. Ordained for you. Okay, now let's look at this. He done recreated you. He recreated you in the workmanship of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he put you in an institution called a church building that you can take groups of people and train them and water them and fertilize them so that they would know what their spiritual gift was. Huh? Huh? And then when your spiritual gift comes up, you can take your spiritual gift way up under the bushes back. You got to leave it in the church on Sunday. You can take it with you. And you can mark out the door. And when you get home, your spiritual gift is still with you. When you come out of your house and walk, well, around your property, wherever you stop at, wherever the soles of your feet stand at, wherever you be, wherever your authority is at on you, in the power of God, it's with you on your feet. Because his word says that by your feet, his word is a lamp and a light to your feet. And wherever the soles of your feet stand at, he says it's yours. No wonder he said, have dominion to subdue. Now let's, let's, let's just recap what he's saying. What he's saying is this. You ain't got to be like Brother Mama Sudi. Oh, no. Because he gave you a gift. Right. What you look like trying to be trapped And you'll give it. <laughs> and he's going to come and ask you, uh, Miss Walker? What are you doing? I'm preaching. Well, where did you give up that gift? Well, I, I did you give me the gift? Well, I, I thought I wanted to be like my grandma. <laughs> People say, where's what I put in you Amen. before the foundation of the world? Because I elected you. I chose you. I predestined you. I gave you something to expose me. Now, you ought not to be trying to do what pastor do. Because, see, you're not representing your name. That's right. Come on. That's right. <laughs> you're standing in the lost and dying world for my name. For my name. I got to be God. If you don't show your gifts that I gave you, how am I going to show somebody that I'm your God? Because when you work in your gift, then an anointing on your gift that breaks every year. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is what the real church looks like when it's obedient to God and just come up under the admonition of God. It flows with a five-fold ministry. Yeah. And there ain't no big eye and no little use because you know what? It's just like the five fingers on that hand. All of them work together and the hand ain't complete without the thumb. Right. And it's the shortest thing up there. 
But I'm so glad I got it because he works along with the rest of them. Because if, if I wanted to pick up something, then my phone won't be there. And I was just trying to operate, you know, with just a lot of times. A lot of times, the church is operating with just. <laughs> I want to teach you this teaching because I want you to see that the church is supposed to be working together because we got people coming in that need restored. We got people coming in that need life. I might come in here and say to myself, Lord, if you just let me get to my church. When I come in the door, I'm going to be like, and then all of a sudden, y'all going to get stopped up. And instead of y'all, everybody getting up bringing their gift. Amen. Lord, did you see what color shade Pastor was in? You know what he been doing. <laughs> Ain't going to bring your gift. He just made an appointment and made room for your gift. And instead of you use your fountain to proclaim your gift, you open it up and go to God. I ain't gonna tell you why before you can get out of the church, right? Amen. Hello? Lord God. I want to see you the The same act. The same act. Put the came over there and said, Pastor, back up off of my back in the name of Jesus. The same act could have said, Come over here with your healing. Come over here with your miracles. Come over here with your faith. Because that's what God made it to do. But instead, let me show you what the church looks like. Let me show you what the church looks like. Well, you know, uh, Sister Sarah, my granddaddy was a deacon. And uh, he taught me at an early age to be a deacon. So I feel like I need to be a deacon. <laughs> what did God say in the Bible a deacon is supposed to look like? Come on, man. Let me get over here for a minute. A deacon is supposed to look like what God said a deacon looks like. And a deacon don't walk in the flesh. That's right. A deacon walks in the spirit. Right. So what the deacon does is he does the things the pastor can get to. Because the, the most important thing for the pastor is to build souls. Yeah. So that the souls can be watered to handle their gift. There are people going to church 30 years ain't never used their gift. Mm -hmm. Not in the church. And so if they ain't used it in the church, they don't know how to use it in the community. Right now. Huh? Right now. Oh, oh, let me tell you. I know what a man of God knows what they give you. I'm going to show you something. You can be standing in big blue and want to come in there. You say, can you pray for me, brother? First thing you know, they got some more. <laughs> Turn it around in there. <laughs> Turn it around in there. Why? Because oh, they know what the anointing is on them. Yeah. They know they keep. See, so they working not only in the church, but they working in the field. Yeah. See, because I think that Jesus told them to go ye. He only told a certain group of people to go to Pentecost to the building, but they was only in Pentecost waiting on something. We ain't supposed to be waiting on the Holy Spirit. Well, when we say yes, Lord, the Holy Spirit came. Yeah. And when the Holy Spirit came, you know, your gift of faith, your gift of miracles, your gift of healing, your gift of tongues, your gift of interpretation of tongues, your gift of wisdom, your gift of knowledge was in the Holy Spirit when it moved in you. See y'all right there, Mr. Kitchen. <laughs> I want to show you what the real church looks like. I want to show you what the real church looks like. And let me tell you something. We don't understand you. Oh, I'm going to prove everything I said. 
I'm going to take them to the scriptures. I'm going to prove everything I say. Right. Right. So, so what, what happens is, God puts you under the blue. And we just as wretched under that blue. Yeah. And we can be. But God said, I'll let you have a relationship. I'll let you fellowship with me. If you would just earnestly seek me so I can use my gift that I sit from heaven. Huh? Oh, I'm sitting in the church. I've been sitting in the church 40 years. And God ain't never got no glory from my spiritual gift. He said from heaven when I said yes, Lord, 29 years ago. Huh? Here go. Here go. Here go. Here go. Turn it. Turn it. Turn it. Romans 8, 29, 30. Romans 8, I don't even want to use my Bible because y'all think I got three Bibles. I want you to turn to Romans 8, 29 and 30. Tell me what it says. Romans 8, 29 and 30. Go there and tell me what it says. See, because I'm going to tell you, there's a whole lot of firepower in here because God says where there's one, you can put a fire in the flame. He said where there's two, they can die. Right. Say it all to be tripping. When we pulled out that blue today, say it all to be tripping in his boot. Uh-oh, that power of that church ain't even going to be able to have a headache to go in there because of the anointing of that church. It's been the crazy God. Yes. Yeah. When you get out in that parking lot, you ought to feel the anointing of the living God and say, Woo! <laughs> when the church is right, the whole ground is sanctified. For the use of God. Amen. Huh? Yeah. But it can't work. House the body can't work with more coming in like this. Right. <laughs> it can't work like that. See, because he got to work in the yes. I need your gifts. Yes. I need your gift. I need your gift. Yes. I need your gift. I need your gift. Yes. Huh? I need all y'all's gifts yes. to work in harmony because that's what the body of Christ does. It works together. Mm-hmm. What, what Romans 8 29 say, bro? It says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, mm-hmm. that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Mm-hmm. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Right. Mm-hmm. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. I ain't got to be justified for what man didn't say about me. Because God just told you I justified him. And ain't no man can put no lips on him. Lord, say what you want to say. Read it. For who he did for no, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Mm-hmm. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Amen. 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 So he called me. So if he called me, he justified. Yes. yes. So he justified. So when I back up to Ephesians and look at Ephesians 2.10, mm-hmm. I see that I'm made as the masterpiece of Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. I ain't nothing that Jesus did not overcome. Mm-hmm. So he gave us spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. So that the church would operate in a minimum of life. But operate for Philippians 2.5. What's Philippians 2.5? He gave us the body, but he didn't let us use our mind because Philippians 2 5 said, Let this mind be in you. Yeah. Oh, that was in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? So he said, Look, I'm going to let you take your gift and be the door. Huh? Uh, I'm going to let you be the hand. I'm going to let you be the left foot. Uh-huh. I'm going to let you be the right foot. But I ain't going to let you do your thing. He said, If you're going to think like that body, you're going to think like Christ because you his master. Ah, creation. Now, I ain't talking about what Jesus did. When you go to Ephesians 2.10, do you not understand that God, your creator, is saying, I made you like my son Jesus. 
you out right here for myself and just let that just sink in for a minute. Because he done called me and justified me. Yes, so now wait a minute. So now wait a minute. The world is like in need of vaccine. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus put a vaccine on the level of hope? <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Sister with faith. Sister with faith. Go down to the other church. Come back, give me a report. Mm -hmm. 
Come on. He said, no. Yeah. No, let me tell you about that one church down the road down there. We got him. Because they ain't setting nobody free with the truth. Mm-hmm. Said, but there's a church back up in New York. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of our people in there. Yeah. And when we went off for the territory, we had to go on a day that there wasn't no church service. Because when they were in there in that house, there was an anointing that we couldn't even go round them. <laughs> there was anointing on the track we couldn't even go around the ground because when we came on the ground we got convicted All right. <laughs> yes. so we had to back up do you have been looking for some more demons so we have been saved yes <laughs> so then he looked around and he said, Okay, I want to sign a power of distraction to go into that church on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. So the trustees would come into church. Oh Lord, I love you, Lord. Oh, bless you, Lord. Step up on the step and that, that step up. Mm-hmm. Immediately, the spirit and the power of distraction. Drops it out of his mouth, I love you, Lord. Mm-hmm. That step needs to be fixed. Mm-hmm. Just that step. Mm-hmm. That, that mm-hmm. power of despite some wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So the trustee comes on me, and he, he's going to tell brother, I got to fix that step. Mm-hmm. Brother sitting over there thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to give him a sacrifice and pray. And here he goes. Mm-hmm. The step I did, you be like, I'm trying to get in the flow, man. man. What are you talking about? about? So he's bringing the power of these guys to you in the church. Yeah. Okay, then sister comes into the back. Sister comes into the back. Let me show you how it happens. And so the power, see, is the pressure upon the idea of the mind that Satan uses to not only despite you, but to fill your mind with something else other than God. So you would say, I'm going to read my Bible. Uh huh. So the power of Satan will come in and press on you to do something else. So the phone will ring. You had your Bible right here. You take that Bible and head down right there. 30 minutes later. And then when that 30 minutes later is over with, you say, now what was I? <laughs> what was it? I was. Don't you? Okay, then Sunday morning here then. Sister just heard heaven on my mind coming down the river. Got out out there in the farm. Did a little bit. Yes. Come in the back. I don't know what I'm What happened to heaven on my mind? What happened? What happened to heaven on my mind? See, this is what the power of Satan would do. See, when you come to bring God a sacrifice, you ought to have your mind stayed on him. You ought not to let the power of distraction, love, temptation pull you away from what you came in his house to bring. Thank you. 
going to go to So then they're going to have a secret meeting because the principality going to assign the flesh in the church to destroy the church. Yeah. 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 So he can have a wound of the community. Right. See, because if the church is right, mm -hmm. if the church is right, when you come to the church, you gather information to take to your community. Mm -hmm. Then the light of the church, you know, in Revelation, in Revelation 1, where it says there's a light, there's a candlestick standing in the midst of the church. Well, when you leave, that oil for your light to be lit, because we are lights too. So when we go to our home, our light goes with us because the word is the oil that lights the candlestick. So when we go to our house, our light is not poured out because we leave the church. Our light goes with us everywhere. We go, that's why he said, it is a lamp and a light to your feet. <coughs> yeah. It's with you on your journey. So when you get into your community, your light is still illuminated. When you step outside, you got to look at the community. You got to go in to the back. You got to tell God what you see. You got to let God instruct you. You need to prophesy to this community. Mm -hmm. Well, you know it. Sister Sarah won't be there. I'd have done something. Mm -hmm. But being she was there, I didn't want to cause no interruption. Mm -hmm. So I'll just wait. So <laughs> Sunday morning, Pastor said, Pastor, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I need for you to come down to my house. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Ephesians 10 said what? Mm -hmm. What did Ephesians 10 say? Mm -hmm. He didn't just ordain a word for the pastor. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Huh? That was it. Huh? He just didn't ordain a word for the pastor. He ordained a word for the whole church. See, and the real thing is, if you ain't got enough anointing to handle the property that you stay on, <coughs> and your soul is so anointed that wherever you stand at, God is giving you where your feet is at, and you ain't realizing that where your feet is traveling at is ordained by God. You don't know what you got on your feet. Right. Huh? So guess what happened? Say this, boom! Over there. You hear something? Uh -huh. You hear know something? Get so paralyzed in fear, they can't even go see what the noise was. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. So, what I need to do is go get Sister Faith. Mm -hmm. Let Sister Faith lay hands on me Sunday, but guess what? I ain't gonna come in here and tell you a leaf flew off the ground and scurried the heck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you that. I ain't gonna tell you I heard something and I took off running. Left my own house, my all and all. I ain't gonna tell you that. Uh, 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 see, the deal is, what I'm gonna do for us is as crazy as I can be. I'm gonna come in here and say, Sister Faith, let me tell you what happened to me. I need your help. And you import what God gave you into me. Because I, 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 I just run. Huh? Oh, y'all got what happened? When the cell phone first come out, brother, I was well. Mm -hmm. And I slipped that old little fluff up phone on vibrate. <laughs> Didn't know it. I was well in that thing with my head on that foot down. <laughs> and that thing went off. <laughs> I said, Lord, what? <laughs> Something done down in my pocket. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. <laughs> that joker hit me again. <laughs> Oh, I know that I do well to help me that way. <laughs> and my feet were picking them up, putting them down. And I had to run all the way around to the front of the house. And then something told me, said, hey, stop a minute. You got a set of phone in your pocket. <laughs>
to stand against what Satan is doing. Why are the church, why is the church not standing against what Satan is doing? Ain't there something wrong? Yeah. With the power that Jesus transferred to the church? Ain't there something wrong? So when are we going to be the church that Jesus made us to be? We're not operating according to Jesus. We're not trying to find out how I can compliment the gift from behind the pulpit by bringing my gift to the church. Letting my church. I'm going back to Ephesians 4 11. Let me tell you one more time. Let me get my Bible. Here's what he said. He said, I give you no promise to promise. The evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, so that you may feed and be watered and be fertilized so you can develop your gift, so you can know your gift. You want me to tell you what's wrong with today's church? That thing right there. Everybody thinks. They supposed to be right here. Yeah. Yeah. To where they lay their gifts. Gifts stowed all around in the church. <laughs> waiting for somebody to pick them up. Because God gave you your gift to bring him glory. Yes. God gave you your gift, your gift to bring him glory. He didn't give you what he gave me. But we can take the gifts and work them together. We do it all the time. We do it all the time. Mm -hmm. My brother can go to the house. He works his gift with my gift. My sister come with him sometimes. We work our gifts together because that's what the body does. We count on each other to lift each other up because we're better together. Amen. 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 You say, well, what got you in such an uproar? Because I don't see him. Mm -hmm. I seen him work. You can't tell me what he won't do. That's right. Oh, that's oh, right. I, I see him. And then one thing is, I'm not. Hmm. I'm not a okay. cop. Okay. I'm a bold soldier. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you what I tell you. Let me tell you something. I'm finna use my gift, and you can't get along with what I'm what I'm getting ready to do. Then. <laughs> Because now, for God I live, and for God I die. Mm -hmm. Here's what's happening. It's understanding that the church is not understanding what God is trying to do with the church. Let's just say Adam and Eve. Hmm. I'm about to finish. <laughs> you see this tissue right here? I'm going to name this tissue Eve. I'm going to name the outside Adam. <laughs> no. Being the child, no Eve is in there. Huh? Mm -hmm. Whatever God says to Adam, being the Eve is in there, and they mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he said it to Eve too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to let that soak in a minute. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Huh. So now, Eve is on board in Adam. The Bible scholars want to say, well, it was Eve. You better hear him when he say, Eve is bone of my bone. That's right. Bless him. I reach in the air and pull out Eve. Amen. So now the question would be, here we are in 2022. What does the husband look like kicking the wife? When the wife is so binding mm -hmm. that if she right in the husband, then she can sanctify the husband. Yeah, and if right. he right, he can sanctify the wife. Yeah. Huh? So now, you ain't going to do right, but you're going to beat up what is going right. Amen. And what's keeping the devils off you. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So now, let me talk a minute. Let me talk a minute. It ain't going to Let me just talk a minute. What we look like Beating up something that's supposed to work with me. Mm -hmm. If you see me sweet coming down the road, going like this right here, you need to stop at the top. Mm -hmm. right. My right hand ain't been going right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to beat it up. 
You're going to be limited to yourself. What do you want to do next, Pastor? Because you ain't doing what I wanted to do. Then you're going to come back and I'm down here like this. <laughs> you're going to be like, what you doing now, Pastor? My left leg ain't going to lie. <laughs> you're going to say, if you beat up your left leg, how you going to drive it, Pastor? Because you ain't got for the left and the right leg. Sure. <laughs> I didn't think about that. How you gonna be up? How you gonna walk into church and look at another member of the body right. that's got the same spirit you got and beat it up? Right. And, it, and, it, and, it, and the gifts supposed to be coming together to glorify God. How you gonna do that? Huh? You want me to tell you how you do it? Because when flesh come into church. That's what flesh is. Yep. Flesh is come down through the church and it'll bring you such a bad spirit fighting against the spirit that everybody knows before we get to the front row, flesh just walked in the church. Changed the whole tone of the church. When the pastor sits back and goes, Sample, you got faith in too. Right. It's your commitment to God. What is your heart showing God? What do you know about God? 
And, and, and if he wakes you up every day for 70 years, 60 years, 18 years, and he's been committed to you and he never left you in bed, man or death, huh? How come you can't be committed to him like that? If he's been there every day, he follows you around every day. And you turn and get, you, well, my breath came out. He's standing right there. So, so, so he's standing right there to give you that next break. Not only wake you up, put you to bed at night. Amen. Amen. Hey, Amen. 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 We by faith. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is this. You ain't got to have everybody else to eat. Have you? Because you might find out you got four or five right. that you could be bringing to the table, but you ain't never looked at what God gave you because you're too busy looking and what's over there. That's right. What's down there? What's down there? God will perfect your gift. God will perfect your gift. Now, any questions? Any questions? That's what the true church looks like. All those gifts that was over there works around the pastor and the building of the ministry. And when one of those gifts get missing because they're mature, they out there evangelizing, making full proof of their ministry so they can send somebody else in here to be trained. Amen. Okay. Huh? That's how the church works. I don't worry about a mature person when they ain't in church, because they is the church. Huh? Wherever they go, they church. In Big Blue, we have church. Wherever you see them at, they church. But in here, if you don't know God, you can repent and get to know him. If you've been working on the gift and it ain't showed up yet, ask God, show me, Lord, what, what gift I got. And you sitting up there with your hand about to burn up. And you sitting there wiping your hand. And who do what? My hand is like this. God trying to come out through your hand. What do you think? Your hand is not like that. Okay. I'm going to ask you to stay. I hope y'all got enough out of this team to try and enjoy it. Yes. Spirit of living God in the strong name of Jesus Christ, foremost Father from the back door to the front door. Father, that every yoke that is laid by the enemy to bind us, we loose it from heaven right now. We take the keys and we unlock those doors of prison that Satan meant for our back. We loose an anointing that breaks every yoke upon everybody under the sound of my voice and even the ones that are supposed to be here that are not here. Father, we ask, Lord, to continue to bless and strengthen the heritage back. Continue to touch Lisa. Continue to touch them, Lord, that they may know that there is a God in heaven. Yes. And that soon, one day, that all of us need to know him. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Yes. Father, I ask, Lord, that you bind our principalities, powers, rules of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in our places from against every household that's under the sound of my voice. I ask that you lose such an anointing on our house where we go to have peace and joy at. I ask you to lose an anointing that will break every yoke that with Satan and his principalities even fly over our sanctuary where we lay our head that they'll go around because of the anointing and the power of the living God illuminated from our prophet. Father, let us constantly consecrate our land to be justified and set apart for you because we live there. Yes. That we may have that peace beyond understanding. Yes. But this is your service prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.